Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to the Little Red Schoolhouse. Come on in. Good morning, Madam Fletcher. Good morning. I'm what chore did you do? Here. Very nice. Good morning, Madam Fletcher. I baked the bread. Good morning, Madam Fletcher. Good morning. I milked the cow. Welcome to the Little Red Schoolhouse. This schoolhouse was originally built in 1876 on Medina Road near Norwalk, Ohio. It was used as a school until 1938 when students from the area began traveling by bus to Norwalk for their classes. In 1975, the schoolhouse was donated to Bowling Green State University by the Linder family to be used as a schoolhouse museum. The building was dismantled brick by brick and brought to the BGSU campus where it was reconstructed on a site near the university's education building. The building was completed and formally dedicated in October 1976. In its new location, the District No. 6 schoolhouse houses a large collection of educational memorabilia in an authentic schoolroom setting. The BGSU Educational Memorabilia Center is open Saturdays and Sundays, or it used to be. So let me tell you a little bit about how a school day would work at the Little Red Schoolhouse. This is the teacher's desk and the front of the classroom. And you'll notice it looks very different than how our classrooms look back at Crim. There's no smart board or even dry erase board. Instead, we have chalkboards that we would write on. And you would be introduced to your teacher in cursive handwriting. I would be Madam Higgins. And we would spend a lot of time working on our penmanship here at school. Now, you might be using chalk at your desks but most likely you would be using a feather and in ink, just like what we had made last week. There are little ink wells in the student desks that would hold ink like this, and you would dip your feather and write on papers, perhaps even made from onion leaves and onion wrappings at your, from your home that you would have to bring in. At the teacher's desk, we have a bell to get everyone's attention. I have my lunch pot here that I would need to bring with me each day. And the one set of school books that we'll be exploring in just a little while. So as you see, a school day is set up very differently at the Little Red Schoolhouse. Hello, second graders. Madam Keeley here. And I'm here to tell you a little bit more about what you see all around. If you notice, there's only one room at the Little Red Schoolhouse. That's because everybody of all grades and ages sat together and had the same teacher and learned in the same room. And guess what? There was no heat in the Little Red Schoolhouse. There was one wood burning stove or possibly coal burning stove in the middle that would have to be taken care of and continuously fed with fuel. Now, whose job was that? That would have been one of the older boys who would have had to go out, collect wood, continue putting it in or cool to make sure the room stayed warm. All the seats around the wood or the wood burner are little. That's because the smallest, youngest kids would sit near the stove, and as you notice, the seats get bigger because the older kids had to sit away. So the older you got, the colder you got. All right. Also here at the Little Red Schoolhouse, some of the things that you would have used would have been, like we talked about some of us this week, was the horn book. There it is. A wooden pallet with things like ABCs and maybe a prayer that the students would practice. Other things would be slates, like Madam Higgins talked about. Sometimes you use ink and paper, but sometimes you wrote on slates with chalk. And we also had McGuffey readers. Instead of our math journals or our monster books, here they had special books with stories in them that would help them learn new words and learn lessons through the stories. Now time to practice 
our arithmetic, I would like two volunteers to come up to the board. We have some three-digit addition problems. All right, come on up, come on up, ladies. Let's get our arithmetic done for today. And you can write the problem on your slate if you are not up at the board. I'm done, Madam Fletcher. All right, very nice. Return to your seat. Good job, girls. So now we're going to practice spelling in the Little Red Schoolhouse way. We would practice our spelling words with a spelling bee. To have a spelling bee, I will say the word, use it in a sentence, and ask the first student to spell it. Let's give it a try. Was. I was at Crim today. Was. W-U-S. Was. Oh, I am so sorry, Nellie. That is not the correct spelling. Please go have a seat. And now I'll try the next student to see if she can spell the word once. W-A-S. Oh, very nice. Thank you. Now you may go to the end of the line. And I will ask this young lady to try our next word. And so we would go on and on until we would have one last speller left who would be the winner in the spelling bee. Ooh, I am hungry. And it's lunchtime. And there's no cafeteria here in the Little Red Schoolhouse. Everyone would have brought their own lunch in a special bucket that would have looked something like this. And inside, you would not have found Twinkies, you would not have found Lunchables, you would have found homemade goods like corn muffin or an apple maybe, a piece of fruit, maybe if you're lucky, a piece of cheese, all wrapped in special paper or maybe even a cloth, no Ziploc bags at the Little Red Schoolhouse. And if it's time for something to drink, we would come on over here. It's not the water fountain, it's a special fountain that you would have had your own cup, you would have filled, or some places there was even a bucket that someone would go to the well and you all drank out of the same spoon. Children, it is time to take out your McGuffey readers and turn to page 74. This poem is called Remember. Remember, child, remember that the Yes, Mary Sue, you may stand. Madam, may I please go? Be excuse to use the outhouse. May you use the outhouse? What a great question. If you'll notice, this schoolhouse only has one room. So to use the outhouse, which is like a porta potty, all the kids have to go outside and use an outhouse if they have to go to the bathroom, even if it's raining. Even if it's snowing, even if there's thunder and lightning, if they gotta go, they gotta go outside. So you wouldn't have had regular encore special area classes at the Little Red Schoolhouse. You might use a piano in the school if you were lucky for some special music class. And you would sing very patriotic songs like America the Beautiful. You would also practice lots of nursery rhymes with call and response. After lunch, you might be lucky enough to have a recess time outside. Outside, there wouldn't be playground equipment, no swing sets, no climbing gyms. You would be lucky to have an open patch of grass where you could play some games with maybe sticks and hoops or balls. Often those balls were made out of pig bladders blown up like a balloon that were kept after they would slaughter their animals at the harvest time. Something else that's very different at the Little Red Schoolhouse is how we manage behaviors. There's no class dojo at the Little Red Schoolhouse. Instead, if a student were having a problem and needed a break, they would have to come up here to the front of the classroom, sit on this stool, and perhaps even wear the dunce cap. Now, if you can imagine, dunce is a synonym or word that means the same as stupid. 
I don't think many students would want to sit in the corner at the front of the room wearing this dunce cap pointing out that they had made a bad choice, would you? And as you can see, there isn't a janitor at the Little Red Schoolhouse. The teacher would have been in charge of keeping the school nice and tidy and she would have assigned chores to the students to help with that, such as sweeping and bringing in the wood and cleaning. After all our lessons are complete, the kids would be dismissed from the Little Red Schoolhouse, so our day is over. You may head on home. Don't forget your lunch pails. As you can see, the Little Red Schoolhouse has two doors, and the doors are made for girls to enter and exit out of, and another door, door for the boys to enter and exit out of. And there wasn't a bus to come pick the kids up from the Little Red Schoolhouse. They had to walk to and from school no matter how far away they lived. <laughs>